Today I'm going to show you how to wirelessly tether with your iPhone. This is a follow-up from our original tether video and I want to show a new way of how you can wirelessly tether using your iPhone instead of having to use a cable. First of all, let's go over the tools that you'll need to do this. So first of all, you know, we've got here some kind of mount. This is the Ulanzi one. I picked it up on Amazon. I think it's about $10. And this mounts into a hot shoe. And then the cable that you'll need. I have the new iPhone 15, so I just need a direct USB-C cable. But this will also work with older iPhones if you have a lightning to USB 3 camera adapter cable and then a USB-A to USB-C cable. And then if you're using flash, you'll also need this hot shoe adapter. And you can tell, see it's got the pins. So it will work with um, your flash trigger. And then you can also mount your iPhone with this adapter. And then finally, you'll also need an Apple TV so that your client can see their photos on a large screen monitor using AirPlay. This setup should work on any camera that's compatible with the Cast Cable iOS app. Uh, today I'm using the Canon R5 with the 28-70 to f2 lens. We're all set up here now. Um, just a little bit about my setup here. We've got the Westcott FJ400 um, and then the uh, Parasnap 24-inch beauty dish. We're just going to do a simple headshot. Um, the phone is airplayed to the Apple TV. You can see a sample photo here when we were getting set up. You can see I've got my phone connected to my camera. There's no wires, no tether wire going across the floor or anything like that. Um, and then we'll go ahead and let's just take a test shot and see how it, how it works. Okay, one, two. And there we go. And we can just keep shooting and it just keeps showing up on the TV so the client can pose how they want. and just keep going. So this is a great, so that way when you're doing uh, headshots for people or you know something where you wanna collaborate with the talent, they can instantly see what's showing up on the screen. Okay, so now we've shown how the tethering actually works. How do you get your photos into uh, Lightroom? And I've come up with a couple of workflows using iCloud Drive, and you can do it strictly mobile, or you can also tie it in with your computer using the, the Lightroom update that just came out a few days ago. Um, so let's go over that now. So the first thing that you need to do is set up a link in Cast Cable so it knows where to save your photos. So to get to there, click on Remote Control and then change it to Photos, click Add Storage Location, and then from there you need to browse to the iCloud Drive folder that you wanna use. You go back and on your locations, you can use iCloud Drive or you can even use Google Drive or Dropbox. But in this example, I'm using iCloud Drive, the downloads folder and imports. And so now that that's selected and you can see there's no photos in there. Okay, now you click settings and then create a storage link and you choose the original file, which I'm using two cards in the R5. So it can be either one of those cards because I'm recording the same thing to both. And then you choose your iCloud imports folder and then create link. And then at that point you're all set. So you can change from photos now back to remote control and begin shooting. And now anytime you take a photo, it will automatically go to that folder and push to your iCloud drive. So in essence, you now have in case of the R5, three copies. I have a cloud copy and then the two card copies automatically. Okay, so now that we have that and the files are pushing to iCloud Drive, first let's talk about the way you would use this in a mobile workflow. After you've done your tethered photos and they've all pushed using the storage link with iCloud Drive, um, I've created a shortcut script that will then take photos from that folder and push them right into Lightroom. Um, I have the iPhone 5, so I'm using the action button and you can see it here, here's the, the link to the script. I tap it, there's three photos right there of our great model, and I'll hit open, and it will take all those photos and push them all into Lightroom, and then as part of a cleanup of the, of the uh, script, you can choose to delete the files at this point, or if you wanna keep another copy that's sent on iCloud, you can keep those and then you could clean them up later. There they are at the top here. So unfortunately, there's no way in, in the uh, scripting with Lightroom Mobile to have it prompt you to create an album first. So at this point, you now would have to uh, create your album manually and then move the, the recent photos into that album just, to move, just so that way you have a reference point and they're not just strictly in all photos. All right, I wanted to go over a few uh, caveats with this setup, just that kind of that we ran, to, ran into while we were doing the, this testing and things like that. And one of them is to make sure that you have a good cable. Um, the cable I was originally using uh, kept 
shorting out, like it would lose connection. We switched the cable out and then it was solid. So that's one thing you might wanna notice if like you're noticing cast cable freezing up or files aren't pushing to the directory like they should, um, it's most likely the cable. Not all USB-C cables are created equal, unfortunately. Another one that you really wanna make sure is that you have good Wi-Fi in your studio. Um, this is ideally for a studio setup, although with this iCloud workflow, you could use it out in the field. Um, it, but along with that, with a good Wi-Fi, you also wanna make sure you have good internet because uh, if you're using the iCloud method, you know, you're then pushing things to iCloud and then they're coming back down to your computer or to your, or pushing to Lightroom. Uh, so you wanna make sure you have a decent internet connection with upload speed. And then one other kind of issue we ran into was with the, the hot shoe adapter. Um, it didn't work initially, or there was something with the connection and we just kind of had to fiddle with it. Then we finally got the flash fi firing like it should. And uh, obviously if you're gonna use this in a client setup, you'd wanna make sure all these things are all connected and ready to go before the client even shows up. Okay, so here is the desktop workflow. Um, so you've taken all your photos, they've been pushed to iCloud Drive or you know Dropbox or Google, whatever you wanna do. And from here, you can use the new local uh, option that was just recently added to Lightroom. And you can now browse to folders. And so we're gonna browse to our iCloud Drive folder and then it's uh, downloads and then imports right here and open. And there's our three photos right there that we just took. Um, one thing that I did find is you could already have this linked up and just leave your Lightroom open right here. And then as you're taking photos, they'll automatically populate here in Lightroom for you. And then now you could then go with your client and review your photos. You can even make some edits at this point. Um, before even pushing them into your uh, Lightroom Cloud library. And then, uh, and then let's just say this was the one he wanted. You can uh, right click on it and choose, where is it? Copy one photo to cloud. And then that will then put it into your library at that point. And then you can work on that photo on your, you know, your iPhone or your iPad, as well as on your desktop. All right, so that's kind of it as far as the workflow goes and uh, I believe I got all the steps there, but if you notice anything that uh, you have questions about, please feel free to leave it in the comments or anything that might help streamline this even more. But, and it seems like it's a pretty good solution, um, it, you know, that works pretty fast and uh, doesn't have some of the hangups that wireless tethering solutions have had in the, the past few years. If you'd like to get the uh, shortcut that I created for iOS, um, please feel free to go to Online Creator Studio in the link below. And we'll, uh, once you sign up for our newsletter, we'll get that link directly to you and that'll keep you up to date on what we're doing. I'd love to hear how you've integrated it into your own workflow um, or things that maybe, you know, we can improve on. That would be awesome. And remember, just keep publishing. <laughs>